So we provide Coreto at no cost, no requirements from you. Uh, it's available on our site uh, every quarter. Uh, as soon as uh, Oracle releases the security patches uh, for Java, we will be behind it in a matter of 50 hours uh, with a, a distribution out there. Um, I said it's at least quarterly releases. Uh, we will also do bug fixes or performance improvements in between these releases as we find them uh, necessary. Um, it is a drop-in replacement for hotspot based GPMs. What does that mean? It means I can take uh, a machine running in Oracle JDK and say, just replace the binaries with Coreto and everything will keep running without the developer having to do anything. And I'll explain later why, why that is uh, quite important. Uh, and last, it's, uh, it's a multi-platform distribution. So we support uh, Linux, Windows, uh, Mac OS, and uh, we also have uh, Docker engines. Coreto is TCK certified. That means that Coreto is compliant with the Java standard. It passes a very extensive set of tests uh, built by Oracle um, called the JCKs. And it means uh, every API behaves the same no matter what JDK you do. It helps, it really helps with that drop in replacement. Uh, making sure that you know, what used to run is going to continue running on various different uh, Java implementations. So uh, we released Coreto um, in November 2018 to the public. Uh, we had a lot of fun. We did it in uh, DevOps. Uh, we were very fortunate to have James Gosling work in our company, and he helped us uh, uh, launch it in uh, Belgium. So you can see there was a lot of beer involved, and it was pretty good beer. Um, so why Coreto? Uh, so Amazon has this idea of leadership principles. We have 14 leadership principles, and that's how we try to make every single decision. Uh, our number one leadership principle uh, is called customer obsession. And what that means is practically 95% of the things we build, features, products, are things that our customers ask us to do. Uh, and then when uh, last year Oracle announced that Java, uh, long-term support for Java is going to come with a license, a lot of our customers called us directly to me many, many, many times every week saying, hey, Java is dead, we need to go do something else, we need to go pick up JavaScript, C++, whatever other language to write a code in, and we have to say, no, Java is free, just like what everybody else is saying. It is free, it is your choice. If you want to buy a license, if you want to buy support, or you want to keep running it as you used to. But quick show of hands, how many of you uh, pay for Java support? <laughs> Pretty typical. Um, so we wanted you to be, you work this way for many years, programming languages today are free. Like, there's hardly any, any offering that says to program in this language you have to pay somebody. And we wanted to make sure that our customers and ourselves uh, keep doing that. Uh, but why did we start inside Amazon? So my team started as an internal team. Um, Amazon is a big job shop get a lot of services in Java. And what we found is every quarter when a security patch comes up, we go and deploy it. And roughly every quarter, sometimes we skip one, something really bad breaks. Um, something prevents an app from starting, app's uh, performance goes down to a point that we, we can't deploy it anymore. Uh, if you recall, we talked about some principles, our top priority in Amazon is security. So what happens is these applications come with security changes, sorry, Java comes with security changes, security improvements, we want to deploy it as soon as we can, and that really got in our way of updating Java across the company. Um, so what we wanted to do is we wanted the ability to catch these bugs before they hit production. You know, by adding our own regression tests, by adding our own tests with you know, sample of our, of our services. Uh, Clearly, we cannot catch everybody. And anybody that says I have no bugs is either delusional or is not measuring uh, you know, what's happening. Uh, there are bugs that go through. And when they go through, we want the ability to turn around on a dime and fix it. Um, so late in uh, 2016, we started a team. Uh, and we started building OpenJDK from source. And 
for 2017, we implemented that uh, uh, Coretto, what we call Coretto in, uh, in Amazon. And we actually had good examples when a bug came in, uh, it broke rendering in some, some interesting scenario. It wasn't very clear, but it was a, a combination of uh, a certain version of the web server, uh, calling a flush on your screen, and compressing the screen. When you did all three together, you had a garbled uh, HTML. And at the same time, we wanted that package, we wanted that update because it added security uh, fixes. So it took us about a week. Uh, we got in, we figured out what it was, uh, fixed the bug, shipped a, you know, a secure version of Java, and waited uh, quite a few months to get a patch in the official version of, uh, of the Oracle JDK. Uh, so, Going out and giving that uh, version of Java for users, we have a lot of uh, initial resistance. So people say, why should I use this open JDK thing? Uh, people have bad uh, allergy to things that start with the word open. Uh, or I'm not going to mention what, I think it's something you can guess. Um, and people say, that's not really Java. Java is what we're using. What about this? Uh, what is this open thing that you try to pedal with? Um, so the way the, the, the approach we took is we wanted to get some early wins. We wanted to have teams say, these guys know what they're doing, we can trust them, look how great we're doing. Uh, and we started investing with performance improvements. We said, well, let's, let's look at what's the most painful thing for your customer. The customer could be any service in AWS or you know, uh, something on the retail side. What's painful to you with Java? And we're able to identify a few of these things and fix them. The next time we got back to the customer, the customer was very happy because his service didn't have outages of a certain kind, it needed less machines to run, or things like that. And with that approach, we reached roughly 20% of the company. So it was, uh, uh, how should I call it? it? It was a process where we we're trying to seduce our customers, right? It's free, you don't have to do anything, click a button here, here's a script that does all the changes for you. It only got us to about 20%. Uh, but after we got to 20%, our uh, confidence level was so high that we decided that, you know what, this is good enough. We just roll it out to the whole company. Of course, in Amazon, we also practice operational hygiene. So we didn't just flip a switch in the morning. And we went and, and did a rounds of about between three to 500 services a day. And moved the whole company. Now the bulk of the company is running correctly. Uh, so, if you want to ask me, do you have good references for companies using Coretto at scale? I'm assuming some of you are using Amazon to buy stuff or <laughs> post stuff on AWS. All that stuff is using Coretto. Um, and what, what enabled it? So, what enabled it is first the fact that it was dropping compatible. Uh, it turned out the only feature, critical feature that we didn't have was the Java Flight Recorder. Uh, and how many of you are using Java Flight Recorder? One, two. So Java Flight Recorder is not yet available in Corel, uh, although there is a process uh, going on to contribute into OpenJDK, and we will, it will be available in Corel as well. Uh, but other than that, we didn't find any issues. So the first few months, yes, uh, way back in early 2017, but after that, we just rolled it out uh, numbers are something like one in ten thousand. We found a an issue, and uh, we found one issue. And the, the issue had to do with somebody using the same library that we use to render fonts, and he had to align the version that was. Uh, we didn't actually see any any regression, any uh, bug that we introduced that wasn't introduced with the update job. So bugs are still introduced when a, a quarterly release happens. Uh, but uh, we were able to go quickly catch them, find them, patch them, and re-release them in, in a matter of days. Uh, the other thing, we, other thing we do in Amazon, and I think everybody knows today about continuous, uh, continuous deployment. So we, we're past the continuous integration. We continuously deploy our, our fixes that go slowly into production. So we might, have, we might break the integration environment, or a single host. We have a, a product called Pipelines. Uh, there's a public product called Code Pipelines. We have something very similar internally. And 
we can easily see. So I can see if I broke somebody's pipeline very, very quickly before somebody has to start screaming, and then we can catch things before they create any wild uh, outages. Uh, with that, we're basically using the Amazon services our, as our guinea pigs. Uh, so instead of trying to keep up a perfect set of tests that cover every single scenario, uh, we do that. We do a pretty good job of that, but it's still not enough. In the wild, you will always find issues. So whenever we do a big feature, we can catch it in, in the Amazon production environment, fix it, and, and get you something that we know have gone through uh, tests. And I'll, I'll, I'll show uh, at least one example. Um, the other thing is we have a profiler uh, in Amazon, and the profiler runs almost every service. And we can go and look at flame graphs across the whole company. So when I want to make an improvement, a customer comes to me and says, this is really slow. We can balance the risk of making a fix. Every time, I, I, what I say is every time you make a fix, you make something run 100 times faster, you just create a break and change for somebody. You know, at the scale of Java, every fix is a break and change. Uh, if you have done software that reaches millions of people, you feel, you feel it. Uh, so what we try to do with this profiler tool is see, does it affect one team? And you know, we'll get to tell the team, hey, build this work around. Here's the best practice around it. Or it affects many, many teams. You know, it affects a few hundred teams. We'll go and fix it. It's clear that a lot of, a lot of people are making the same mistake. Let's fix Java and not ask them to fix their code. Um, and of course, the upside, uh, the total upside will be we have performance goodies, we backport fixes from JDK 11, 12, now 13 into JDK 8, um, and just fix bugs that people would otherwise wait for years until somebody picks them. Uh, this is an example of a, a flame graph. Um, it is used in uh, AWS SDK called 2S3. Uh, we see the pattern a lot, and there you can see that 20% of the call here has to do with uh, uh, the call to big, to big integer. Not only do we see that happening in one call, we can see that this happens on many, many services, and then we can go back and optimize it. Uh, I'll go to, into a different example. This is only for illustrative purposes of what, what that looks like. Um, so a switch. Shell decided to go to the So um, so what I have here is I have three demos. Uh, I'll start with one uh, and we we'll go from there. Uh, the first one is uh, there's a method in uh, Java called get simple name. It's a method that gives you the, basically the method name or, or the class name. It's uh, used in uh, things like logging and profiling if you want to capture what method you're in. Uh, the profile team actually contacted us in this case and said, hey, we are profiling heavily across the company. We're seeing this method just pop up. And we tell people you can turn on the profile and it's almost free, but it turns out it's not free because this method is quite expensive. Can you do something for us? So, um, so here I'm running Coretta. Can you make the font a little larger from the back? Uh, okay. Is this good enough? 
Yes, that's fine. Okay. So, um, so what I'm doing now is I'm running Coretto with uh, get simple name. It's a JMS test that will just run many times get simple name for method. And you can see at the bottom it takes about two nanoseconds per uh, operation. I'm going to switch to the Oracle JDK. Uh, this is running uh, to the So we're running uh, JDK 8 version 2.11, it's the latest security patch. Uh, I think I haven't validated that this fix actually made it to 2.12. But I just want to show you this, the, the, the difference um, between what happened. This is true for about two weeks ago. So I'll run the same test. So we went from 2 nanoseconds per op to somewhere between 800 to 1,000 nanoseconds per op. Uh, that change was very, very, very significant. Uh, here's another one. Uh, and this is uh, threading form. So I'll start with the uh, Oracle JDK. So we see about 4,000 to 2,000 uh, microseconds per op. This, the fix here is a little bit smaller. Uh, so we go to. It's the same. So I'll it off. Yes, because I want the same one. So 4,000 to 2,000. We're back to the Oracle JDK. Still running on, uh, I'm still running on the board over here. Programming in one stage is always fun. Sorry, you don't have to trust me that it does work. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I don't want to waste your time thinking about this. Um, but again, the, the idea here is we're not trying to keep improvements in Corel. The idea is we have a customer request. We don't want to wait a long time for it to get out. We get it into Corel, and we contribute it, and we start the process of getting it approved. Uh, before, though, we contribute it, we run it against Amazon. So we know that works, you know, we didn't break anyone, we have a big, call it a big beta test before we share it. And then we contribute it back into the OpenJDK project, and then it will make it back into the other distribution of OpenJDK, including the OpenJDK. Um, 
So the next question people ask is why are you doing an external uh, binary of Grow? Uh, how many of you knew that uh, are using Amazon Linux on AWS? So it turns out that we actually released the public distribution of the OpenJDK for quite a few years uh, on uh, Amazon Linux. Uh, and that was a pretty good story. So uh, as the public updates for Oracle JDK were going to happen in January 2019, we had a story for customers on Amazon Linux. But as, as you notice, not everyone is running on Amazon Linux, and not everybody is running uh, on a single distribution of Linux. We heard from a lot of customers that are, are running on Ubuntu, and CentOS, and Windows, for example. How many of you run on more than one operating system in production? Uh, we heard from quite a lot of people, and what they told us is they want Java to run what we call a back-to-back -to -back compatible. Version. So if I have this bug on the Windows machine, I want the same bug to exist on my existing <laughs> Because guess what? You, you put workarounds in your code around these bugs. And then when you use a different distribution of Java, it doesn't work anymore. So with, with the Oracle JDK, you had that feature. You use the same version of Oracle JDK across different, uh, different platforms. Uh, a good example here is customers that uh, ship an application to customer. The customer can install it himself on Windows. Or, or on any, you know, any of the few Linux distributions. And if you have to start creating that matrix of customer <coughs> operating system and bug fixes, that gets really, really complicated. So we had, we had a lot of demand of give us something that runs all over the place, uh, something that will run on Docker containers, run on Mac OS for the developers, run on Windows for production. Um, so we just listened again. We listened to the customer, going back to customer obsession. It was a very strong, clear message from the customers. Please give us this one thing that we don't have to pay for, and we can run everywhere <coughs> in our uh, So this is the list of words, what we support today. Uh, we do Windows 32-bit, uh, 64-bit. We do Linux when GDPC is version 2.12 and above, and that means Red Hat 7 Plus, CentOS 6 Plus, and so on. Um, we also have a generic uh, Linux distribution. So even if it's not one of these official uh, Linux sets, you can still take this uh, TTZ and, and drop it into the machine and expand it. Um, uh, we have support for Mac, as you can see on my computer, and we have official Docker images. Uh, so this is time for another question. People know what the difference between Docker images and official Docker images are. So when you go to Docker, you might Docker Hub, you might find a lot of images, but very few images will be tagged as official Docker images. That means the Docker team is working directly with the team that builds this, knows who they are, and they're officially coming from us. So, so the Corelli image comes from us. Uh, you might see other Java images, and they might be official or unofficial. If you want to run production, make sure you know where you take your your uh, so this is uh, Corello, it's uh, supporting both Java 8 and Java 11, and uh, we think we're going to hit the million count pretty, download count pretty soon. Uh, it's pretty nice since launch of this uh, GA only happened in uh, February. Uh, so this is what we promised when we launched. Uh, we launched in November. We said that Amazon Linux 2, Windows, Mac OS, and Docker. Uh, added additional distributions, added 11, uh, and a pretty important milestone which we just hit uh, by the end of uh, April is the support, uh, the long-term support. Uh, what, what's so special about April? Uh, up until January, Oracle was running the OpenJDK repository. So our work was quite simple. What we had to do is take the code, it was tested, the, you know, Oracle did most of the work in, in uh, providing the patches, uh, security patches, we had to bundle it, add our own commits, and shoot. Between January and April, it was basically a, a Red Hat project. Red Hat took the leadership of the project, and we put engineers on this project. If you look at the commit history, we're roughly the second biggest uh, contributor to the project now, with Red Hat in the lead. Um, we 
believe that you know, most of you have soon run on uh, JDK, is that true? How many people run on JDK 11 in production? Okay. One? Anybody else? Um, so both JDK 11 and JDK 8 no longer getting uh, patches, uh, not bug fixes. There's, there, there is a process where we share security vulnerabilities under embargo between Oracle, us, and many other uh, maintainers uh, of the OpenJDK project or distribution owners. Uh, so we want to make sure that Java is still secure for everyone. It's not that any company has an advantage when it comes to security. And that's why you, you never see us release security patches ahead of the rest of the community because if Corella releases one, it means the Oracle JDK is vulnerable and vice versa. If you know, Red Hat will release it or Ro Oracle will release it, other distributions will be vulnerable with zero days. So we make sure it's all aligned, all the work is done weeks and months in advance, and then uh, we all have kind of a TikTok and release it uh, roughly on the same day. Um, a common question, uh, there's a few common questions that people ask us, uh, and I want to try to answer a few a few examples. Uh, does, you know, Dollar thing work? What is dollar thing? It's different for everyone. But the two most common questions are uh, Does Java Uplet or Java Web Start work with Corel? Um, the answer is that Web Start is a, first, it's a deprecated feature. So it's only in 8, it will not be available in 11, uh, at least not in the Oracle JDK. It was also a commercial feature in the, in the Oracle JDK. So Open JDK project itself does not have it. The good news is that uh, Red Hat has built a plugin or an add-on uh, with uh, WebStart, and you can use that plugin with Corel. We're not bundling it together, but if you choose to use Corel, you can install that. Uh, the next question is, does JavaFX work? So you want to render, you want to do some desktop applications. Again, this is a feature that was a commercial feature, but uh, in this case, uh, Oracle opened the project. Uh, OpenJFX is now maintained by a separate team. And we are bundling OpenJFX with uh, JDK 8. And we also made some improvements. So the rendering is one to one uh, with what you get out of Oracle. So basically, Pixel by Pixel compatible. This was one of our ma main investments up front uh, in the compatibility of Corel with the Oracle JDK. Uh, we, we didn't want a page, a web page, to start because you added two more pixels to start wrapping around things of that nature. Um, there's a few things in JavaFX that are not included. There's some commercial codec codecs that are not included. But most customers we talk to um, a deployed Corel have the same issue. Um, how do we support Corel? Uh, what, what, you know, you want to decide to run Corel tomorrow, what does it mean to you? So first, the security patches are completely free. Uh, they'll come out quarterly. Uh, if we see regressions, we will prioritize them over anything else. We, we know the pain of this used to work, I just updated Java and things stop working for us. That will be our top priority, of course, security is always a top priority, but typically security runs under embargo and gets released in the next quarter. Um, we're not attaching any cost, we're not attaching any, any requirement for you. Uh, you want to file bugs, we have a GitHub repository. Uh, we have a Stack Overflow tag, and we connect them all automatically to our uh, internal bug system. So if you file a GitHub issue, it just shows up on the engineer's desk, and we start using it just like a regular bug somebody else file. Um, if you are an AWS Premium Support customer, uh, you also have another channel where you can call support, file a ticket. Uh, the big advantage there is that it's, it will be private. You don't, you don't have to put something publicly on GitHub. Although, even if you're not an AWS Premium Support customer, I encourage you, go follow up on GitHub and tell us there's some things I can't tell you in the public and we'll work with you. Uh, but this is a really nice channel for AWS customers that do manage support centrally. Uh, you can use that system. There's no any added fee or cost for it. Uh, we talked a little bit about collaboration. Uh, there's two, two paths to collaboration. Uh, path number one is uh, we want to build a new feature, something big. Uh, 
for example, were very interested in working on garbage collectors. They're, they're a key, uh, key component that, that impacts service latency. Well, these things we typically we just work in the public on the tip with the Oracle engineers or whoever works on that feature and collaborate there. On the other hand, if we have something that we want to do really fast, these things don't happen fast. These things take a lot of consideration. Uh, they eventually may get backported to JDK8 that you're all using. They might not. Uh, and there we will implement things inside Amazon first on JDK. Uh, we'll try the button. We will put the, the, the code in Corella, but we will not contribute it until we're sure that we tested it in production and we know it works well, and then we'll look at it. Um, like I said, uh, there is a big community of maintainers uh, on the OpenJDK 8 update projects. Uh, the community really stepped up, and I think we're going to do a really kick-ass job on getting you quality uh, OpenJDK. Uh, I want to move to an example. So this is an example of upstream your patch, but also I think a uh, pretty I think a nice tip for how to operate Java services. So in Amazon, like I said, we have many, many thousands of services running Java. Most of them uh, have uh, the right metrics, the right alarms. But what we do see at a that large of a scale that sometimes things escape the scene and uh, Java services, one of the most common things I, I'm seeing Java services, uh, the, main, the main Java service failure mode that I see that's kind of the same across the board is the Java process runs out of memory. Or the Java process gets very high in memory close to the heap and the garbage collector starts crashing. Uh, you know, so if you're in C, you would run out of memory, but if you're in Java, garbage collector is going to work really hard and you're going to start seeing longer and longer pauses. Uh, just show of hands on this again, what, what do you guys, how many people think that they see that a lot and it's a common pattern? A few. Okay. Um, so what we're trying to do again is, is do things at, at, at scale. Yes, we can go team by team by team, provide them with uh, guidance, provide them with expertise, build all sorts of you know, smart algorithms that will find what, where your settings are wrong. And we still do that. Uh, but you know, thousands of services, that, that's a huge undertaking. What we try to do as well is build a standard metric and say, please use this metric. Please alarm on this metric. And we will eliminate most of these uh, problems. So we created this, uh, you know, heap up occupancy uh, is, is a very common uh, metric to use. But what we're using is a metric called uh, heap memory after GC. So what that metric does is it tells you after the garbage collector has run and done a pass, how many live objects are left in it. Uh, and it's quite interesting for modern collectors like you want because they do their best not to collect them. So a great, oh, a great service running G1 looks full all the time. And as a customer, you don't know if it's in trouble or not as an operator of the service. You only know when it starts misbehaving. So we said, well, we have a great idea. Let's take this metric. It's a standard JMX metric. We can invent anything. We said, let's take a metric. metric. By default, pipe it into our uh, systems that do alarming and, and, and monitoring, and just ask people to put alarms on. Uh, and what we told them is do these two things. I, I'm explicitly not sharing the exact numbers we're using, uh, but you can see roughly from the graph where they are. Uh, so at some level, you want to work. Typically at that level, you have maybe two or three months before something bad is going to happen, but you want to start looking. And you can set that line wherever you think the line should be uh, for your company, for how, how many people you have, how many services you have. But it's a good indication that something is growing over time. Your service is starting to use more and more memory. It could be because you're getting more requests. It could be because you deploy code changes that are slowly becoming less and less effective over time. Uh, it could be on a memory. You have a, a service running for a long time and slowly leaking a few bytes of an hour. And, but you're running for months and it's just going to creep up. Uh, so when you hit that green line, we file a bug. When, uh, actually what, what we do now is we decide not to file a bug, we, we alarm you, we just do it during the day. So we don't wake anybody at night for this, but we alarm you during the day so you can't ignore the bug. Uh, on the orange line, we wake you up in the middle of the night. 
because this might be a very crucial service that's going to go down in minutes. You don't know when it's going to go down. It might work actually for another month. But it's, you know, the, 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 camel, the camel back can be broken at least. So we want to wake you up and we want you to do something about it and not ignore it. So we did this, we deployed it. Um, our lesson from this, this actually works really well. Um, we thought it's not going to be as effective because it's really just detecting the slow leak, slow growth kind of situation. But we did find out that when you give Java enough uh, heap space and you follow this religiously, you're fine. Uh, every, every event we saw was captured by this uh, kind of graph I'm from. Unfortunately, that is not that simple. Uh, what we found is G1 actually has a bug. When G1 runs mix collection, it doesn't report the memory correctly. And the graph is not as reliable as you want it to be. And when your graphs are not reliable, the alarm's not reliable, and your engineers turn them off because they do false alarm. So um, we detected this problem run. Actually, I, I went back for a bug data system. And the bug was reported late November 2017. Uh, one of our engineers sat down. It took quite, quite some time to figure out where it's coming from and how to do a fix that's safe and not expensive. But we got a fix out uh, early January, and we implemented the Java 8 update uh, 152. Uh, so if you're familiar with JDK updates, uh, 152 is the, the number you want to look at for uh, into JDK. The time we fixed it was uh, 2018, uh, sorry, January 2018. JDK 8.152 came out a little before. So we patched it on top of 152 in Amazon. At that point, we didn't have a public correct yet. So uh, we immediately opened a contribution to OpenJDK in January. Um, and I went back, and you can see the bug number on the bottom uh, in the OpenJDK bug database to kind of track and see, you can see the whole story there. Uh, and I must say, before we go further, this is actually a normal process. It is not anybody's fault. It is as um, you know, I, I would hope it will go a little bit faster, but it's actually pretty fair. Uh, we submit the contribution. Uh, the, contri the contributor says, "Well, guys, please get it into the get it into the latest release of the product." Uh, and it got in five months later into JDK 11 uh, 01. Why? Because JDK 11 was in stabilization mode and said, "Hold on, we don't actually expect." It to use 11, at, at 0, 01 release, it could be fine to get it. We got it in there. To get it patched uh, all the way back to 8, it actually made it in April this year. So while we had a great idea to tell you, that, you know, here's a good metric you can use, it wasn't going to work with uh, the rest of the OpenJDK uh, distributions until we got into Corel. Until we sorry, contributed from Corel into OpenJDK. And to me, this is one of the main values of Pareto, it's our ability just to go in, fix, and then uh, get it. Um, if you want to know what we actually did, you can go to aws.amazon.com uh, slash Pareto. We have the list of all patches. Every release we do, we, we show it out there so you can see what's, you know, what, what, what is in Pareto versus what is in OpenJDK. As things get merged, we remove our own patches. Uh, how many people heard about Adopt OpenJDK? A few people. Uh, Adopt OpenJDK is a very cool project, I think. It's a project run by the Java uh, user group in London. And they're building various, uh, open, various open source builds of OpenJDK in their build farm. They run a lot of extra tests. There's a lot of cool collaboration between the teams around um, uh, tests and uh, build logic bug fixes, uh, they also do their own distribution uh, for, uh, for JDK. Uh, completely valid uh, distribution. And we just, we like to work with, with the community. Again, Coreto is not a project about we're trying to differentiate ourselves, differentiate ourselves, we're not trying to sell you anything, we just want you to keep running Java. And whatever Java is best for you, Take it and use it. Uh, and the point here is all these companies are trying to get together behind OpenJDK uh, because the power here is in, you know, we have a 
group, they have a group, another company has another group, and together we, you know, we form a pretty formidable force of Java engineers that can build something. Um, how many of you contribute to open source? You? Uh, so there's a common question asked, should I contribute to Corella? Should I come back to your project and give you source changes? The answer is I, I wish, but uh, we, it's more important for us that your contributions will go into the OpenJDK project. And OpenJDK project is run under the Oracle Contributor Agreement. So we ask you, please contribute to the OpenJDK project, and you will take the product and give it directly to us. Unless, of course, you want to help us with things that uh, are build related, test related, uh, or things that may be already in uh, JDK and then we should back for. But everything new, everything interesting, we want to make sure it goes under the OCA and makes it into uh, the job of the table that um, Sorry, so I want to go back to uh, our team to summarize what is our team goal in Corello. We want to keep the open JDK community thriving. Uh, we want to help the community in any way we can so Java remains free and it's vibrant. You can still use Java, new improvements going to Java and everybody can, uh, can use it. We want to keep it, the second item is keeping it free. Uh, we want no restrictions, use it wherever you want under the, uh, the license and GPL you do with class class exception. Uh, other than that, there are zero restrictions from us. Uh, we want to quickly validate the release improvements. Uh, we want to move faster than the OpenJDK project. Uh, and we want to grow our contributions to the OpenJDK project. So growing the team and growing the ability to uh, make significant uh, changes and significant, significant improvements to uh, What can you do? Uh, you can download the use Corella. Uh, you can integrate it with uh, your platform. Uh, we've seen, for example, IDEs. Take it, include it as another default Java people can use. Make it easy for your users to use uh, other distributions. Uh, obviously, contribute. Open issue is a great contribution. You know, you try it, you like it, if you like something, let us know. We'll fix it. Uh, that that's a really important contribution as well. Uh, and of course, uh, like always, we're hiring. Uh, you can find me. You can find our uh, open positions. And, uh, Cool thing about the JDK team in our office is we don't necessarily ask you to move to Seattle. So we, uh, we have engineers, we actually have one engineer uh, working right here by, who well, used to work for, with the team on by the Empire State Building. We have engineers in uh, different countries, different time, time zones. As long as somebody's strong, uh, engineer can work on his own. We'll see. Uh, this is for later, these are references. The Corella project is on GitHub. The documentation is on Amazon.com, and uh, Stack Overflow uh, has a, a tag for it. Thank you very much. Uh, again, you can find me on uh, Twitter, or you can also look at the database open for the rest of our uh, open source projects. Thank you. Thank you.